Oh, looking forward to meeting Rita uh, right now. The Money Whisperer, Martin Lewis, is with us now. And surprisingly, loads of emails for him this morning. Good morning, Martin. Morning, Martin. Good morning. I've been accused of many things in my time, Alison, but whispering is not one of them. It's very true. Martin, very I'm, true. Lo I'm loving the kind of slightly more hachute look today. A little bit of stubble. Easy like Sunday oh. morning. I like the stubble. Well, <laughs> Stop seeing it. I'm presenting Good Morning Britain tomorrow and they forced me to shave for that. We had the big fight over the tie. I don't have to wear a tie, but I do have to shave. So I'm just having a little bit of a last bit of, you know, salt oh, pepper. enjoy it, darling. Looking. Enjoy Good. it. All right. Uh, loads of emails here for you. Let's kick off. This is Trisha. Is my husband paying too much tax? My husband has a nest pension. He's 57. He's decided to cash in on some of his pension. Uh, we thought you could take 25% of your pension tax free, but they're saying we now have to pay more tax. What are our options, Martin? OK, I think this is a common confusion and people misunderstand how pensions tax work. You can generally take 25% of it tax-free, but how that works depends on how you take the pension. So what I want you to do, everybody now for me, and I want you to imagine a Swiss roll. You've got that picture, you've got the sponge and you've got the jam swirly bit in the middle, yeah? Oh, yes, yeah. we're there. Now, normally... Yeah, you're with me. I, this is working for you, Alison, I can tell. Really, this, right. this is on so my... Normally, but focus on the financial bit. Okay. Normally, if you take your money out of your pension, you've got your pension pot and you just withdraw it, what happens is you get a slice of the Swiss roll, yeah? If we think the jam is the 25% that's tax-free and the sponge is the amount that you're taxed on, you get a slice. So you get 25% of it is jam is the rest is sponge. So some of it is taxed, some of it isn't taxed. If instead of taking your money out, you are allowed to take 25% just the jam, you can get all the jam, all the tax-free stuff out as long as you put the rest into an annuity or an income drawdown type of product. Now, I'm oversimplifying here just to give you an idea to show you that how you take the money out can make a massive difference to how it's taxed. Now, the one good thing about pensions is don't listen to me because you can get bespoke one-on-one -on -one free help from Money Helper which is a government-backed organisation, totally free. And anyone thinking of taking money out of your pension, you should get a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Money Helper first. Because taking it out at 57 might be too early for you anyway, but also you need to make sure you take it out the right way and I get great feedback from them. So I've just given you the Swiss roll analogy to show you the differences, yeah. but don't do anything without getting proper bespoke guidance from Money Helper. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Martin. This one's a little bit upsetting, to be honest with you. Catherine got in touch. I recently fell for the what? fake Martin Lewis scam on Facebook. I recently fell for the fake Martin Lewis scam on Facebook. I am a single mom who has recently lost both parents and was scammed out of £35,000 by this company. Oh. Is there anything I can do? How worrying. Martin. Um, well, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear it, um, you know. I've tried to shout for the last six years as loud as I possibly can that I don't do adverts, anything with me on, the, on social media unless it's my own direct feeds is a scam. Don't touch it, but you've been caught and many others have been caught and it is getting more difficult and they're getting more clever. Look, that there are some chances you may get some or all of the money back, but I need to manage your expectations. It doesn't happen for everyone and you can't plan on that. What you need to do is you need to speak to the police on 101. You need to talk to your bank and you need to get in touch with the Citizens Advice Consumer Helpline. I mean, what you've told me isn't enough for me to give you help. It may be that the um, uh, push payments regulations mean that you might be able to, a voluntary code with the banks mean you might be able to get some of this money back, but you need to get on with it as quickly as possible. So the police, the bank, and Citizens Advice Consumer Helpline to think about how you get the money back are the most important things. But you know, it, it is getting... I mean, it's pretty bad out there. We have a wild rest, an unregulated wild west on the internet. And these scammers, these criminals, these thieves who are trying to you know, take money off people are allowed to get away with it without any real consequences. We have to change the law. There's, there's now a scam with me. It used to be pictures that let sent you through to a fake BBC or Daily Mirror website. There's now a scam with me that is an AI one. I think you've got it here. Watch yeah, this. Yeah, have a look are profiting from it. Elon Musk presented his new project in which he has already invested more than $3 billion. Musk's new project opens up great investment opportunities for British citizens. No project has ever given such opportunities to residents.
Oh my goodness, that is not me. People, yeah, exactly. So people, you know, you you're rightly trusted and you've earned people's trust, and you know, and you've shown that throughout the years. So how do people? So what are the rules for people? What should they? What what shouldn't they be trusting? Basically. Well, with me, it's pretty simple. If it's an advert and it's not direct contact from me, from one of the sources that you know, you know, this morning my show, Good Morning Britain, I, I, my website, uh, or my social media feeds, then don't trust it. With, with anything else, though, I think when it comes to certainly advertising on social media, my rule is always simple. Unless you have independently verified it through a secondary source that you've done direct from somebody trusted, then you must assume it is a scam. You... Certainly anything that's investment that's advertised, I would yeah. not touch with a barge pole without going directly to a trusted source. You do uh, not it, I mean, do By the way, that wasn't Elon Musk either. Nothing... I do not do adverts. I never do adverts. I don't talk about investments. If it's Bitcoin, if it's an investment scheme, if it's get rich quick and, and you're seeing it like that, it is a scam. But there are, there, it's not just me. Many of the dragons are involved in this. Elon Musk commonly figures... And you know what? When they say it's Bitcoin, they're actually scamming Bitcoin as well because it's not really Bitcoin. These are just thieves taking your money. Yeah. They are just thieves taking your money. You're not investing in anything. You don't have an underlying asset. It's not Bitcoin. They use Bitcoin because people think, oh, you can get rich quick with Bitcoin. They're thieves. That's what you need to think. Thieves, criminals trying to steal your money. We need to get the word out, but... We also need to get regulation and proper protection and proper policing yeah. of this. Yeah. Them. Especially on AI. Oh, my God. Uh, Lisa has emailed, what's the best way to tackle my debt? We have credit cards, store cards, bank overdraft uh, debt adding up to £30,000. We are homeowners in a mortgage-free house worth £180,000. We want to get a loan, so we've just got one debt, but we're not sure if we need a personal loan or whether we should remortgage. Who do we ask and where should we go? Well... The first thing I'd say is you say you want one debt. Personally, my preferred option would be to have the cheapest possible interest rates. That may mean having many debts, but that may mean you have a bigger minimum payment each month. So I, you know, as a textbook answer, I would tell you to look at those credit cards and store cards and see if you can balance transfer to 0% cards. Can you shift your overdraft to Nationwide or First Direct who offer 0% overdrafts depending on the amount that you've got? Or you can actually use a, a certain specialist money transfer credit cards to shift it to 0%. And I would want it all at 0% so there's no interest. But you may find that too complicated and it's acceptable if you do and that you can't do the money management, in which case it is very tough to get a loan for £30,000. You need quite a lot of income and you need a decent credit score. So you could look at putting it on your mortgage, but remember a mortgage is secured debt. So if you can't repair it, you can lose your house. And generally mortgages are over a long time. Now, now what's interesting is if I asked you what's cheaper, I mean, I'm going to ask you a simple question. You're going to get, it's the obvious answer. What's cheaper, a 10% a ten percent debt or a 5% debt? I would think 5%. 5 debt. Well, you would, and I understand why. But we didn't ask the other question. 5% over 25 years costs you more in interest than 10% over five years. Yeah. So the length of borrowing is crucial too. So if you get a mortgage, even if you get it at 5 or 6%, well, 6% interest you'd be looking for now, 6% interest, if you're doing that over 25 years, it's actually costing you more than a loan on a shorter amount. The problem is you are going to struggle to get a single loan on £30,000. So I'd be looking at, can you use your existing cards and store cards more effectively? You want to move the highest interest rate debts possibly to a personal loan, if that's the route that you're choosing. If you want a mortgage, speak to a mortgage broker about the best way that you can do it. If all this is too much for you, then you could go and speak to someone like Citizens Advice or National Debt Line or Step Change, but and hopefully, you know, they will come up with a solution for you or Money Helper, again, may be able to help on this one. But, but ultimately, my focus would be, if you can cope with lots of different repayments, move every single one of the debts to where the interest rate is lowered, lowest, because that's the way that more, more of your money then goes towards clearing the debts, not just servicing the interest. But it's a complicated question, I'm afraid. Thanks, as always, Martin. Thank you, Martin. Good luck with... Uh, good morning, Britain. Looking forward to that show. Thank you. Tomorrow. Cheers, I'll show. <laughs> See Thanks, you later.